Okay, y'all, let's start the show. Hey, it's Brian Lape, known as Brain Muffin, the Lifting Nerd, here for episode 34 of the FanCast. And driving across the desert with no name, Mr. Eric Ward. Hello. Oh. Ah. Nothing, nothing pithy, just a... So. Okay, nothing pithy. Nothing pithy to it. And up there in the Northeast, the man that's going to WrestleMania next year, LMP, Liquid Metal Pro. As a very racist Mexican once said, Viva la segregación. But the Feliz Navidad. Yes. Well, I'm pretty sure I must have pissed off everybody and a bunch of SGWs are like, no, 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 Mexicans can't be racist. Oh, fuck yes, we can. You so, saw the movie, uh, Family here, Family? let me let me channel my inner kendo. So, are you admitting you're from Mexico? There, liquid metal pro. <laughs> you have a hacienda in downtown Mexico City. Well, everybody already thinks I'm Mexican, and since other than a few people know who uh, I really am, what I look like, I might even know my name. Or may not, I don't know. Uh, no, uh, really not Mexican, but I'll probably say just for the hell of it. All uh, right. I look the part. So. I that counts for something. All right. So, it is, uh, it's time to record. So, everybody, um, have a good Friday. On Good Friday. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> um, Sorry. Fortunately, no, I can't eat meat. Uh, I still kind of follow this religion thing. I had chicken, pork, beef, and fish for lunch. God damn it. And I'm still living. Well, I'm going to help with that one. Uh-oh. El- Eric's fading out into the wilderness. Someone send the dogs day. out. Well, no, wait. He's out it's in the California, desert of right? no name. Huh? It's California, right? Yes. California. So like Bermuda Triangle of the Desert or something like that over there? Yep. Absolutely. Well, the men in black finally got him. Nope. If you're talking to Eric, all we got is digital static. But if it gets worse, I will call you back. There went our show. Oh, what the heck? Why isn't this recording? I want this image, not the shell script. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm distracted. I'm trying to do three things at once. All righty, guys. So uh, anybody have any news? Let's just kind of get some of the news out of the way. If anybody's got something. I mean, I've got some, but I'll uh, leave it to you guys first. Um, I just wanted to say one thing. I saw a comment somebody posted on the Facebook group about um Star Wars Last Jedi memes and you know stream rants saying how I don't know like they were trying to do a little backtracking. That's not what pissed me off. What actually bothered me, and I've been saying this for a while, is how the porgs look like reject Pokemon. Well, it turns out that in last jet i never saw this uh so i had no idea what they were but apparently it was like an ice fox correct me if i'm wrong yes it was an ice fox okay and it's called all bolt pex b-u-l-t-p-e-x yes no i don't know i haven't seen the movie just keep Swerving to a point right. at some point. Okay, so basically, this movie came out in 2017. Now, it struck me as odd because in 2016, when Game Freak announced the uh, new iteration of the Pokemon games, a certain um, Pokemon from the Gen 1, yes, I know, I'm showing my age, am I possible we lose them? I don't give a damn. I'm a gamer first. Um, a certain uh, Pokemon named Vulpix was given an ice type form in that generation in 2016. Now, the reason why this pisses me off is because I I already uh, basically uh, called wanted to call Disney on their bullshit by saying how they are essentially stealing ideas and creating a reject Pokemon, you know, as a um, as their own product when they in fact probably did rip off the said idea from a Pokemon game and put it in a Star Wars film. Vulpix is spelled V-U-L-P-I-X. Volt. Pex is spelled V U L T P E X. You can't pull the fast one on the me, Disney. I saw through that shit as soon as I knew what it was today. 
fucking well, assholes. LMP, you know they well, you know LMP. They rip off movie posters too. Yeah, I, and that's the thing. Like anybody who's trying to defend this movie, call it original, call it uh, amazing, creative, and everything. Holy fucking hell! It, I'm pretty sure there, there's a lot of people out there that probably would have caught that. I didn't because I obviously didn't see the damn piece of film. And for anybody asking, how the hell do you know this thing? Well, goddamn it, because I actually played the damn game, so I could see the uh, the similarities right there. Jesus, I, I, honest, uh, Disney, go fuck yourselves, man! Like you guys had to rip off something else that's popular. Can't have a leg to stand on. All right, I said my piece there. I just wanted to say fuck Disney. So, or do you feel better now? Nah, I haven't had much sleep. Uh, Mexico here has been pretty dangerous lately since they took away our guns. <laughs> can't defend ourselves anymore yeah it's amazing how that happens they take away the guns and things get worse yeah, gun free zones yep. they don't quite work too well go to chicago oh, yeah gun free zone he means uh target rich environment that's what it means i sell every day i sell my tacos i get looted by the bandits the attackers are our guns and that is a great segue into talking about the death wish we make uh, yeah. LMP has seen it. Uh, uh, I've seen it. Brian, you haven't seen it, have you? Nope. Go ahead. I was shocked uh, that they actually got into the whole political, uh, you know, overview of the gun-free zone of Chicago and all of the violence, you know. And I was really surprised that, that they went in that direction to where they wanted to, you know, it wasn't a big part of the movie, but, you know, they were talking about statistics and they were talking about, you know, just the danger of a gun free zone. I was really surprised that, that they wanted to push that because they could have played it. They could have played it safe or just not mentioned it. But they kept getting into it. You know, the whole debate of. Damn Chipotle. You know, I, I was just surprised that, that they actually went that direction. Yeah. Huh? I well, I wonder how much Bruce Willis had a part of that. I mean, he is a bit more conservative-minded, right? He is in the movie. Yeah. 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 Um, He's just a mild-mannered doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, before we continue, uh, Eric, yes. what you thought of Bethany? Of who? Bethany. Bethany who? Ask for Bethany. For Jolly Roger. Oh, she was cool. She was hot. Yes, I agree. I was like, when I saw that, I'm like, Bethany, do you come with the gun? <laughs> <laughs> you know, dude, I knew that that, that I knew that that was going to come to the movie, so I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. But I wasn't expecting that to pop up at the end like it did. I don't know about you, but... Oh, no, was it, was really nice, cool. it was a nice... It was a nice... It was a nice little... Um, it's just a nice little uh, one-liner there. Like, if you had hot chicks that, that worked at gun stores like that, you'd say good. You'd see gun sales freaking skyrocket. Jesus, I just want to see her stroke the damn thing. Oh. Stroke my gun, baby. Well, tell you, well, I'll tell you what. You can take her, and I'll keep land. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair trade. I mean, both land, of them are gun um, if chicks. If you ever uh, hear this, I'm in love with you. Not only am I in love with your boobs, but I'm in love with you. And Eric will be slapping that ass someday. Kendall can call me Eddie all he wants, but if I had that piece of ass, you could call me anything you want. That'd be a happy guy. <laughs> um, unlike, I don't know. Someone and, probably and, call you off and, later. Unlike <laughs> Eddie, and unlike Eddie, I'd be fucking the shit out of that on a daily basis. <laughs> oh, man. But in all seriousness, getting back to the point of the movie, what I really found surprising, I don't know about you, Eric, is that they still kind of kept the spirit of the original intact. Like, they didn't really deviate. Yes. Um, yes. I, I have fears. Yeah, Eli Roth was going to, and, um, you know, the, what was it, Langhans? I forgot, was going to, like, screw it up royally. And I, and, and I had this fear, and I've talked about it numerous times already, that they were going to completely miss the point. You know, I watched the movie... Um, I remember watching one of Death Wishes when I was a kid, so I didn't actually see one until much, much later. So it was a few years back when Netflix still had it on. That's how long ago it was. 
But um, when I saw it, I was really surprised at how the movie was still relevant. You know, something from the 70s is still relevant to this very day. Talking not so much about just the gun culture that, you know, we always hear about, but more or less like the overall theme of the movie that you just, there are people out there in the world that sometimes are total shitheads and they don't care good person, bad person, whatever. They will do shit just for shit to get. They will hurt people. They will kill. They will rape. They will do anything. You got to speak louder, man. Hey, well, Eric, we're getting like, a lot of background right noise from you, thing. man. Well, if you guys can hear me a little better now. That was a sorry, motorcycle. I won't yeah, it was a motorcycle. Oh, so that's Eric. Yeah, go Ain't ahead. Ain't no motorcycles right here. That Rocky playing in the background for some reason. Um, <laughs> hey, I like the Rocky movies. They're awesome. All, uh, well, I saw five finally for the first time, and I was like, all right, it wasn't that bad. Five, but at least that bad. You know, there's some cool parts in it. Yeah, it has some good parts. Uh, we never get. We'll get Rocky Seven, Adrian's Revenge, like the Simpsons predicted, but <laughs> we're, we're. yeah, that that's a prediction they got wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but before we deviate too much, much more than we already have, um, basically this whole notion that you can, ha- and again, remember that the character in the movie, Paul Kersey, he's a pacifist. He actually yeah. starts out in the original as a liberal, essentially. Yeah. Uh, they even call him bleeding heart liberal. And it's like, it wasn't until the home invasion that left his uh, wife dead and his daughter catatonic, basically a living vegetable, we will. Um, that he went, you know, he took some time off, went to Arizona, and kind of got reacquainted with the whole his whole gun roots, realizing that they were more it, than just. And it's crazy guys. too that in that movie, he didn't get the bad guys. He didn't get the guys that, that assaulted his family. Oh. Imagine that. Yeah, imagine a movie being made like that today. It, it would never happen because you got to get the bad guys now. There's no way. Not even that. You know? He lost in the end, technically. If you want to get if you want to get technical about it, he lost in the end. He got caught yeah, by the got, police. Yeah, he got told to get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. Really wasn't until the second movie that he got the bad guys in the end and you know was a man uh, the last man standing, so to speak. But he he did it at a high cost. Lost his daughter and um basically the stability in his life. And I'll tell you what, man, that's uh because I recently rewatched the original Death Wish. That's yeah. a, that that's a scene where his you know wife and daughter are assaulted, man. Especially with his daughter, man. It's disturbing. And, and I will say this much about the remake: I was surprised that they didn't go that far. But part of me wonders if that was actually a smart move on their part, because yeah. in this day and age, had they shown that scene. Oh, they that movie wouldn't have made theaters. So I'm thinking that had to be one of those things that had to have been toned down a bit, just so it could make the art cut. Well, I tell you what, though, man, if they would have been bold enough to have done that, that would have made you as the audience want to see those fuckers smoked even more. You know? I mean, still wanted them smoked in the end. Oh hell yeah! Oh but yeah. It really, it really is a movie. Um, talking about the the remake, the movie itself that was cool. Like about it Surprising is that it, cool. a mirror. it held a mirror to the to the world and basically said, re- "Look at this. This is reality. This is reality that can happen at any moment. Has happened before and always will happen. No matter how many gun laws you create, no matter how well in a well adjusted neighborhood you live in." There's always a risk and possibility of things like these happening, and if you and what's crazy it was, is the beginning of the movie. And I really like done illegally. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Andre. No, no, it's no, it's fine. I was gonna say is that if you watch the movie, just think about it. He acquires his gun illegally in the beginning. <laughs> he just picks it up, man. <laughs> think about how it ends, though. On the on the other hand, think about the message that it shows at the, that they were actually getting at at the end with the guns he acquired at the end. Legally purchased, yep. used for protection. Oh, I just I'm really like the fact that anybody, but 
it goes back to a, a, a team we were talking about not that long ago. I was just going to say, I like the fact that they took the time to show that, you know, he wasn't a fucking tough guy. You know, like with that scene, in the, you know, at the beginning where they're at the, his daughter's soccer game and that, that, you know, piece of shit starts giving him a hard time and trying to antagonize him. And he just, you know, keeps his calm. Everything's cool. But, you know, I thought that was cool. I agree. It, overall, um, I have few complaints with the movie. I really can't think of anything. Even if I try to nitpick it, I almost feel like it's very minor to the point it doesn't really do anything. I really can't think of anything off the top of my head. And, and one of the things that I really liked about this movie, just like watching the original, is that it has a relatively short running time. I don't think yep. this movie would have been as good. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it goes nowhere near the two hour mark. And I think it is a much better movie for that. Short, that sweet, scene in the movie point. was the fucking ice cream man sequence. I laughed oh. my ass off, man. <laughs> <laughs> I loved how his homies were like, they just fucking, they ran like the Negro, man. Holy nice. shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be strike oh, two. Man. Waiting for number three before YouTube shuts us down. <laughs> Holy man. Yeah, speaking of which, yeah, Kalen Webb has been doing, there's some video that apparently I appear in. He's uploaded it like three times, and I, before I can even watch it, it's uh, Disney has put a copyright strike on it. Yesterday I saw it, it was up 42 minutes and had already been um, uh, disabled. Damn. Had like yeah, they four, weren't fast. Huh? What was I that, they said Eric? They were fast. Can you hear me? Yeah. What What was your question? No. Oh. <laughs> He's getting deleted. Oh, there he goes. The crazies There's of California are going after him. Try oh, my man. Boy. He, he just had to say he liked Death Wish, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah. a whole California went after him. Well, I can, I can definitely still hear the background noise, so he surrounds somewhere. Oh, he's probably being picked up by a flying saucer. Yeah, you gotta be careful out there and the, then out there in the desert. That's where them people get estricated out of a flying saucers. Get the guns ready. Can you guys hear me? Don't want to get probed. Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, man. I just got I just got probed up the ass. So. Yeah. But at least they gave me lube. You know, yeah. So. Well, hey, if you're out there in Palm Springs, there's a there's actually a pretty good way to to fake a. I saw a guy do this in Phoenix, but he he, uh, he uses a, ca a candle. He puts it in a paper bag, and then using a clear balloon, he just kind of fills it with helium, but not fully. You know, like a big plastic, and it just kind of just floats up into the air slowly and over, over the city. You can only do that in the desert because the flame is not going to hit anything flammable, most likely. And speaking of flaming, if you like that sort of thing, Palm Springs is the city for you. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Hey, what about these flames? All right, Dustin. There you go. You can. You got a place to go visit. We're so getting bad for this episode. Ah. For the nine people that are gonna listen. <laughs> hey, I, we actually had a that that guy that uh, sent himself up in the rocket. We talked about that last week before the big show. So we scooped him. What happened? This flat earther who launched himself. You remember re hearing about that? Went up about 1,800 feet. No. So he built his... Okay, this guy, he's a, a limo driver. 62, I think. He built a rocket. I forget how long it took him to make. And he launched himself 1,800 feet into the air because he was going to take a picture and disprove that, the, you know, show that all the pictures <laughs> that NASA sends are, are fake and of the curvature of the Earth. Um... <laughs> And I believe it was an open canopy. Uh, the the G forces kind of got to him a little bit. He landed safely, as far as I know. They put him in the ambulance. Yeah, I read this article. I think I even posted on Facebook last week, and, and it was like I was reading the article, and I'm like, and the result of it was what? You know, did he take a picture? Not take a picture? Did he say, you know, 
Dim Darren Nass has got me all skiglified. Now I'm going to have to build a bigger rocket. I mean, it's like, okay, he went up, he went down, he went in the ambulance. That was pretty much the whole article. How anybody in this day and age actually believe in the flat earth theory? How? I don't well, know. How is that I, possible? I don't know. Like... I've heard the funniest thing I ever heard, and this was from a medical video once that he did on, on the flat earth conspiracy people. The funniest thing I ever heard was that people believe the flat earth theory because it's a global, uh, this is a globalist conspiracy literally designed to sell you more globes. That that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. This is a funny thing. That that's what they believe, that it's just done to sell globes. And you know what? That probably would be convincing if I could, if, if there was somehow a level of believability to it. It almost sounds like it could be. Like that sounds like an actual conspiracy theory. Uh, the other reasons that they give for why the Earth is flat just sound ass retarded. This is the only one that probably has anything like any leg to stand on. Right. That's yeah, I just, I just, it just blows my mind. That, it just blows my mind. The the. The amount of stupid, ignorant people that are walking around the earth taking up valuable oxygen for the rest of us. Yeah. Well, we call those people New Yorkers, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just took, I guess, I know I just insulted myself, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of flat, if you ever want to switch it up, Brian, uh -huh. and you want to put a flat chick, you know, up on your, you know, main picture week. Daisy Ridley, man. <laughs> Initial check right there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> As the anti BBC, right? Is that what yes. you're talking about? Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. She's, she's the flat BC, flat breasted cunt. <laughs> 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 oh, by the I way, just a lot, just, just seeing that we're on the Daisy Ridley subject, uh, like Jeff, I've been listening to the Last Jedi audiobook. Did you guys hear Jeff talk about the explanation for how she got her force abilities? No, I don't think he. I think they're going. What they're going to do is a, is an extra video for next week where they're going to go over because that and um, I know Jeff said he took like fifteen pages of notes on all the deleted scenes off of the the Blu-ray. Yeah. Well, in the book they explain that when Kylo Ren probed her mind and the uh -huh. Force awakens and her minds joined, right that she inadvertently downloaded his force abilities. Right. I'm done. <laughs> That's what I figured. What fuck? I'll so fuck it all. This is downloadable now. <laughs> I'm walking out the door right now. It's like, what the fuck, man? I'm out. <laughs> yep, so it was a Matrix, essentially. Yeah, who needs training, man? Just download this shit telepathically. Well, you know... <laughs> Let's just go ahead and segue into all of our Star Wars nonsense. I mean, you know, when I saw first saw that movie and she closes her eyes, you know, she says the Force and she becomes calm and closes her eyes. I'm like, I was, I was thinking of the Matrix, you know, where Neo is fighting and, um, well, it's when they are going after. It kind of starts when they're going after the base. And they're gonna they're gonna run into the base, and he and um, Trinity are in the elevator. And they've got it all rigged to explode, and you know that's just holding on by one little clip, and he's going to shoot it, and it's going to fall, and they're going to go up. He looks up and says, "There is no spoon," which is a very, uh, you know, was a callback to earlier when he met with the oracle, and the kid out front was telling, uh, teaching him how to bend the spoon, and uh, essentially saying, "You have to bend your mind; You're, the spoon won't." move and, and of course there is no spoon so that was the start of his realization that he be, he was starting to believe he could do more than he was doing and so that whole path then uh, you have the agent who shows up shoots at him and he dodges the bullets and he does he gets scratched but that's it he tries to catch Morpheus um, you know he you know he does catch Morpheus uh, he uh, Trinity is in the helicopter and he basically believes he can hold up the helicopter and he does briefly I mean that whole journey that that last what 40 minutes of that movie or so that whole scene and then he gets stuck in there and all that um, and then she opens her eyes and that's when she beats him and so all the people that uh, you know ER has a really good um, video on it 
But up until then, Kylo Ren is beating her eight ways to Sunday. He um, force pushes her into the tree. Uh, he chases her around. Um, Which uh, should have broke her back. Oh, yeah. You know, I think he force pushes her in the tree first, and that's when Finn picks up the lightsaber. And then he messes. You know, he, he toys with Finn until Finn hits him in the arm. I think or he, he hits him somewhere. Uh, yeah, he's like in the arm or something. You know, and that's very or... similar to the way Vader was in Empire, where he was but toying Luke, with yeah. Luke until Luke actually hit him, and then that's when he's like, "Okay, I got to end this kind of thing." And Finn uh, shouldn't have been able to, to even touch him. No, he should have taken him down like with one blow. So, well, he's that's what sanitation stormtrooper. Right. Place. Well, and that right there was, you know, he had fought with it earlier uh, against one of his troopers, which was kind of. Yeah. You know, it was still one of these things, okay, he doesn't even know he has a, a weapon, and then all of a sudden he can use it. So he, he, that's why I started to believe that the Awakening was him. I actually started, after seeing that movie, I had wondered until, you know, The, the Last Jedi. He if better he, than Right, if he had some Force sensitivity. Um, but, uh, you know, and then she just closes her eyes, relaxes, and I was just like, oh, great. You know, this this is dumb. And I actually, that theory, I've heard multiple people say that. And I'm like, but that doesn't explain how she's able to push him out, how she's able to fly the Falcon, never never flown before, but she does all these fantastic maneuvers, you know, doesn't know how because she knows she's how to female, do that. Brian, yeah. And the force. Yeah. So now we have, you know, Vice Admiral Gender Studies is, is apparently force sensitive, according to an article that Laura Dern is quoting something. And it's like, there's nothing in the movie that says that as far as I know. But then you have the toy commercial at the end of the movie where the kid pulls the broom to himself. So, you know, maybe the force is just out there in everybody and it just has to be awoken. The first, the force oh. is woke, y'all. God, no. Are they going to do something dumb in episode, well, what are we up? Not nine. They're going to bring it back aren't they they're gonna bring back the medichlorians aren't they i don't know they're gonna bring it back i have a feeling it's gonna happen we may have lost eric yep there he went yeah it, oh, it didn't fuck off with that one <laughs> yeah it's like i'm not talking to these turds anymore call them back yeah it, it's kind of like i don't think they have anything left to do but dumb you know it started off stupid. It started off with all the mystery box nonsense. Uh, I forget who it was. Someone posted a link in uh, the WCBS fan page. There's a guy that went back and did a kind of a rant on. Um, it's I think it says the Last Jedi rant, but it's about the Force Awakens. And each thing, each mystery box is like, oh, I can't wait to learn more about that. And there's a there's an image of Ryan Johnson just kind of fades in and out. <laughs> you know, like like hey, that never happened. Hey, Eric's back. And it never will. Uh, back. So, but uh, you you were talking about the audio book, Eric. Go ahead and see if you can stay online long enough. <clears throat> no, I was just saying, you know, I'm about three quarters of the way through it. And for those of you who would say, why the fuck would you listen to that stupid shit? I like listening to the audio books. Strictly Star Wars audio books. So I couldn't resist. Uh, overall, it's still a piece of shit. Um, but they did add a couple of cool things in it, like uh, Han Solo's funeral, which is pretty cool. Um, and they got a little more into, you know, Kylo and Snoke. Um, nothing substantial, but just a little bit. Um, overall, you know, it's okay. Um, there's still some horrible, horrible plot lines in it. Uh, probably the worst part is just getting through the whole, um, the whole bit with. Uh, with Finn and Rose and Rose's backstory about her and her sister and she keeps referencing her as Pei Pei. That's her nickname because her sister's name is Paige and just ah, uh, it's uh, it makes you almost want to vomit. But you know, overall that's okay. But just that whole bit with, as, uh, um, just that whole bit with you know her her downloading. Uh, the force through Kylo Ren is, you know, pretty funny. Oh, God, I'm about to walk off again. And they do not reference Vice Admiral Holdo having any force abilities in the novelization. So, <laughs> I'm sure you two heard about that bullshit. 
Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Until you, when you I'm about to step out of it. I don't know, why would Disney even want to talk about that shit? Like, what's the point? She's fucking dead. She, she was a shitty character to begin with. Who cares what she was? It's irrelevant. You want to know why? Because they can't admit the truth. They can't admit one simple truth. And that's that they fucked up. They fucked up royally. This is one oh, of the... They, they, yeah. This is one of those things where they put all their... Essentially, you could say they could put most of their eggs in that one basket. And the majority of them cracked. There's anything that can be salvaged is barely salvageable as it is. And they would have to, basically at this point, cancel Nine and redo the trilogy over, starting with a new Seven. What did you hear about? I was going to say, did you hear about Mark Hamill? Coming out yeah. and saying that he's, uh, he told Disney that, you know, basically they're, you know, they're fucking up by, by just flooding the market with all this shit. He's like, it's just going to be overkill. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. They're oversaturating the market. I mean, what was it? Toys R Us, uh, uh, they did put out, an, uh, somebody put out an article and apparently Toys R Us did say yes, the sale of the Star Wars. The lack of sale of Star Wars toys did help contribute to its downfall as well. So, oh, big time. Especially those fucking you know, blade builders. Holy shit, man. Like, have you been nobody to a Toys R Us shit. lately? They have rows and rows and rows of those fucking blade builders. You, you want to hear a funny Toys R Us yeah. story? I have two of them. I was actually going to, um, I was, I was thinking about, I don't know, maybe loading the video or something um, about my experience with Toys R Us and just saying, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I used to remember being there. It was a place being, uh, you know, that had a lot of life there. I especially like playing the video games there. Oh yeah. And, we had, and and whatnot, right? But you would always see toys. You would see traffic. Things would sell. And looking at it now, yes, things are selling, but only because you're getting them at a deal. Things that were up to like sixty percent off. And um, one of the craziest things was, I went there and I was like, for all time's sake, you know, let's go check out stuff that I enjoyed or have bought or. You know, just relive maybe a childhood moment or something like that. Let's fuck, let's fuck, let's do it, right? Things that I saw that were sold out that I had any interest on were trading cards from, from any type of trading card game, you name it, that I probably played in the past. Um, things related to uh, wrestling were pretty much gone with the exception of those WWE dolls that I don't even know why WWE bothered with that in the first place. Oh, yes, I know why, because the same reason Disney did. Uh, Nintendo related stuff, especially the Amiibos, were pretty much cleared out. I was like, holy shit, just a moment, a while back, these weren't selling because they, uh, they like had an overabundance of the same one and now they were gone because they were literally out of steel and uh, a few other things. But you know what I saw a lot of in that particular Toys R Us I went to? I saw nothing but fucking Star Wars everywhere I went. The Nerf Star Wars, still on the wall. Um, the I really don't know what the hell they were, but these larger toys that were like anywhere from uh, one to uh, one fifty, maybe even less now with the extra discount, all over the place. Uh, the figures, this whole se toy section, the sabers, everything, the dolls, still there. You would have thought, yes, you would have thought that there wasn't an actual going out of business sale the way they those toys were still on the shelves. Nobody really gave a damn, and what's even more telling is that um, there's actually another Toys R Us here in New York City um, in Times Square. Um, when they first started announcing the Toys R Us is closing, it wasn't one of the ones affected, but when me and my brother, um, when we went to watch a certain movie, we'll probably talk more about it a little bit in a little, in a little bit, um, in the city. And we went to that, or past that Toys R Us, and they were having it going out of business sale. Mind you, their discounts really were like only 10 and 20 or 30% off, which really is not much of a discount. Their prices are already higher than most normal toy stores, so make up that what you will. But holy shit, the stuff that wasn't selling, again, Star Wars, so much of it. Yes, there were other things that weren't selling either, but, that, but the Star Wars stuff, I could have sworn, was the same stuff that I saw on the same shelf from like months and months and months ago since when that store first opened up. It is pretty telling that... Even when there is a clearance sale, these things aren't selling because nobody wants them.
they made a lot majority of these toys for girls. Do you see little girls playing with these toys? No. Girls don't give a shit about Star Wars. They really don't. That, I mean, if you find one and you make sure you keep her, and if she happens to be hot, you make sure you don't ever lose her, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you, you keep, that's your keeper right there. If she loves Star Wars or loves something that you're into, keep her, you all right? Her. That's the best advice I can give you. But it, it was like with the Ghostbusters. I remember when, when Sony did that whole thing, oh, we're going to appeal to women. Yes. Yes, there were women that started buying Ghostbusters t-shirts. But did you see them buying anything else Ghostbusters related? Maybe a few Funko Pops here and there, but those were then in, in clearance not that long after. They weren't out buying the new toys. Those went on clearance immediately. Yes. That shit, that shit's going to get down to a dollar. And even then, shit still might be rotting. You it's watch. still rotting everywhere. Nobody wanted them, them female Ghostbusters. I don't care how hot one of them is for some people. Yes, Kristen Wiig would be, um, probably seems like the type of chick that you would want to bag, especially after a few drinks. But that's just me. And that's just that one time. But I don't give a shit about any of them in that movie. And the only good character in that entire movie just so happened to be Thor. Never seen it, never will. Don't do it to yourself. Never do. I saw that movie in theaters. I, w I was wanted to walk out. Everybody's like, why are you overreacting? And watch that movie. How sad I, is that? I watched it because of the dumb argument. And I'm never doing... And this is why I didn't do this shit with The, four, uh, with the Last Jedi. The dumb argument. Oh, you can't judge it if you haven't seen it. Bullshit. I'm not watching anything that looks trash to me um, from the start. I don't have to justify that anymore. I did it for Ghostbusters, and I regret it. I should have just not watched the movie, period. I wanted to just... I actually gave away the pin that they gave me for the movie. They gave us, like, a promotional pin. I gave my shit away. I just couldn't deal with it. I was like, this is not this is not Ghostbusters. This is not what I grew up watching. No, it's shit. not Ghostbusters. It's a bunch of shit, man. It was a bunch of feminized, bridesmaids bullshit with proton packs. And even at that, a fat chick that don't even know how to use one. So much for femme power. Wish that would have watched like some uh, the accidental deleted scene where they all accidentally uh, zapped themselves to death. That would have been much more entertaining. Five star movie right there. Oh, hey, LMP. Speaking of cool Toys R Us stories, we're a little off the subject, but I figured I'll throw it out there. Every uh, every year for my birthday when I was a kid. Yeah, my grandparents would take me to Toys R Us. This is in the this is this is back when Toys R Us, man, was it was just it was a really cool place, man. Um, I don't know if I'm looking back at it a little romantically, just because I was a kid and stuff. But anyway, uh, my grandparents would take me every year on my birthday, give me a shopping cart, and tell me to fill them up. Wow. Yeah. That was Ooh. awesome. That's like the like that's practically like the best experience you could have at a Toys R Us when you go with a with a family member, um, aunt, uncle, um, brother, older brother, older sister that you know really looks out for you, mother, father, whatever, right? Grandparents, whoever, anybody you were really close to, or anybody that you really um, that really um, you took kind to. I, I remember even like. Stores like Kmart even have to have more variety, in, uh, even have more variety in their toy sections at that point, uh, just to kind of compete with a place like Toys R Us, a little bit. But I remember things like that, and you would go, and one of those experiences would be, "Hey, look, they got you this toy, or they took you there so you can get this game." For me, especially being a gamer, pretty much the entirety of my um, life when I since I first picked up the controller, some of the best memories of me were to go into pre-order. Um, video games at to Toys R Us. Yep. And at that time, they weren't really called pre-orders. They were called reserves. You would reserve your copy. So, you know, with a, a pre-order thing kind of was a term that we didn't get used to much, much later. And I think that really became more of like a GameStop sort of thing. Um, but we used to or we used to reserve copies. Uh, one of my favorite memories was um, back in the six, Nintendo 64 days, 
Toys R Us had this promotion that you reserve your copy of Pokemon Stadium 2, you got a poster for the game that was only available to that store, to that um, to Toys R Us. So an exclusive content worth pre-ordering. And, well, needless to say, I was a kid and I was very reckless with my shit, but the poster was pretty cool and I really enjoyed the hell out of it. Especially because I think it had a certain gloss to it, kind of like how the games had on the Game Boy. So I really enjoyed the hell out of that. And it was one of my favorite experiences. Um, on top of that, getting to play the demos of the game early as well. So Toys R Us, there was just really nothing like it and probably never, ever will be, which is really sad and depressing. But at the same time, such is life. Certain things will come to an end and we will move on and enjoy them for what they were. Well, they just got they just got ran under the ground, man, because back in the day, Toys R Us used to be a clean, organized store. And slowly it became kind of dirty and just, you know, it was just, it was always messed up and just shit strewn all over the place and disorganized and it just, it just changed. I don't know why that is. It, It just seems like they started giving up after a while, doesn't it? It's like Kmart, you know, Kmart back in the day, like it was never a high end store, but back in like, I'm sure Brian remembers this. Back in like the 70s and the 80s, Kmart was a nice, clean store for the most part. I mean, they just started getting dirty and run down and just shitty over, over yeah. the years. It's management, man. You know? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing when you know when you were talking about Toys R Us and and uh, even Walmart was was clean. And I don't know how much of it is just you know the store is there for 20 years or 30 years, and how much of it's the the brand. Um, you know, I don't show, shop at Target very often, mainly because there isn't one near us, and I find their prices a little bit expensive. But you know, I don't know if if someone knows of a Target, if it's, you know, Target's been in the same building for twenty years or longer, does it run down? Um, you know, well, I, I, I actually, don't know which comes I actually first. work. I actually work. Uh, my company. We actually one of our clients is Target. So yeah. I'm in Target quite a bit, and they're very, even the order stores. They're very clean. Right. You know, that's mm. their aesthetic. You know, they want to, you want to walk in and it's almost a showroom type quality. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, that answers that question. Mm. So even, even like, like the other day, I was, you know, ironically enough, I was in San Bernardino. Great place. I didn't get shot at, luckily. And, you know, that <laughs> car that I was in, you know, it's kind of a shittier store, but Oh, every really time. Wasn't much of a difference. <laughs> right. Yeah. You keep fading out right in the middle of your story, man. <laughs> Some of the best parts, too. I know. It's like it's on purpose. Oh, darn the satellite got him again. Nope. It's the man trying to shut us down. I, mean, I can tell that you're saying, can you hear me about- now? But that's all. It- all right. How about now? That's better. No, I was just saying that, you know, ironically enough, I was in San Bernardino and I was at, at a Target there. And, uh, you know, for the most part, even though it's kind of a lower end Target, it looks just as good as most Walmarts. <laughs> so it's kind of fucked up. Uh, um, and you, should, you should see the, uh, they're in the Target right now is in the process of remodeling across the country over the next couple of years. And I've been in a couple of the new remodels and they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they're fucking beautiful. Well, I mean, from like, I, I've been to like numerous targets. That's like a, a staple now here in, uh, within New York city and even um, outside the city too. But target, um, probably, like Brian says, it's probably because it's like more of a recent thing. They're not, they haven't been in the same building for like 20 years. So they still kind of, have their upkeep, but com- I, when I have to compare Target to like Kmart, Toys R Us, and the occasional Walmart uh, trip, Target just seems more uh, visually pleasing. It's not as dirty, mm-hmm. it's not like over the place. Uh, they even got a Starbucks there now, which, yep. you know, it's it's pretty telling. Like you know, they're trying to keep an image. Um, even like the, like there's a, there's a, like, now that you mentioned the remodeling, there's one here and, um, not, I mean, a distance away from where I live here in Brooklyn, 
where that target is on the remodeling. And it's, I don't remember when that area where it's the Barclay Center now. So for anybody that watches wrestling, yes, it's that place, okay? But, like, it was a really run-down location, and the Target is, like, one of those places that really generates a lot of business. Uh, I, can, I kid you not, like, that place is practically packed almost every day. But they always have, they, even when they're even remodeling now, they're still trying to keep it, you know, organized, clean, whenever they can. So it's uh, pretty telling that it's, I think they're probably one of those businesses that wants to make sure they don't make the same mistakes other businesses do. It's just kind of like throwing the towel and say, you know what, we've been around for so long. Why do we even bother have to um, keep our image up? And that's the thing about Target is, you know, even though their prices are more expensive, you know, they're smart because they're keeping to, to that, to their brand. If you walk into Target, it's clean. For the most part, it's organized, you know, and it's a higher end brick and mortar business. And if they, if they keep to that, they'll, they'll continue to succeed because most companies that shop they want to bring their kids in a fresh and nice way. They don't go to a shithole. And believe me, there's milfs everywhere. I agree. And might I add a lot of smoking hot milks mm. and, and tight yoga pants. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. All right. I don't know what's wrong with my transparent so. ping, but it's driving me nuts. All right. I'm telling you, LMP, LMP, you'd love it out here, dude. It's wrong way. <laughs> Once you get a good signal, I'll decide to move over to California. <laughs> it's just, it's almost ridiculous how often it, it he gets the bad signal when he's you know. Although he was talking about you know how good it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Do you remember early on when I was the one having connection troubles like almost every episode? Yep. Funny how that torch has been passed on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every time you do, it's like, oh, ice got him. Oh. Yep. Well, Eric will be back at some point. Damn yeah. Illuminati. There we go. Oh. So, oh. deleted oh. scenes. Does anybody want to talk about any of the, I don't know if anybody's even seen any deleted scenes I want us to talk about on the Last Jedi nonsense. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Now you're yep. really loud. Now you're nice and clear. Um, the deleted scenes, eh. The only good scene was the scene with, um, with Luke and Ray, the third lesson. Did uh, either of you see that? No. No. Nah. Well, in the third in the third lesson, uh, Luke and Ray are together, and uh, sounds sexy already. Oh, that's really hot. Tell us more. Wow, that's yeah. awesome, that's man! Yeah, Holy cow! part two yeah really that happens oh man like she's a oh see I, we talk a lot of shit about rape but god damn that deleted scene damn she took it like a champ yeah who thought who would have thought she has a little bit of that uh ferocity in her so that sea cow really is male never knew that i'm glad he, she showed luke what what he was really milking no oh. <laughs> Do you want to talk about memes? I think you wanted to talk about memes. I already said that. All I said basically was um, the or whole memes. like they, they. I don't even know. Like to me, that 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 bolt text thing just just reeks of plagiarism. It, it doesn't. I, I don't want anybody saying it's an inspiration. No, it is just too coincidental. Yeah. And it's, it's sad that I have to keep talking about Pokemon to prove a point, but. If they're ripping off something else, another popular franchise, and, and then putting it, that character into one of their films, 
and selling merch off of it, you can't tell me that is in some form of plagiarism, or at least bootleg AIDS version of it. I don't care. Just, it, just, it just sounds bullshit. Oh, but it's not copying. It's a it's a it's a homage. It's an homage. It's I ought to slap these people in the side of the head. Watch some better quality entertainment. Watch Death Wish. It teaches you lessons. It makes you a man. Or a woman. Or a hot chick named Bethany. Yes, I agree. God <laughs> damn, she's just hot. Yeah. Like, well, I saw that scene. I was like, mm. I would gladly buy a gun if I could if I could uh, have some alone time with Bethany. Yeah. Just uh, just teach me how to, how to stroke my barrel. <laughs> Well, the only other thing I have about The Last Jedi is my son informed me today that one of his friends has it. Now, it is a friend that's notorious for bootlegs, but uh, considering how much they all hated the movie, I don't know why he has it. But uh, So my son said hey, you know, he wants to watch the movie with me um, if I want to watch it, and they want to do like a, a podcast. So we might do some kind of podcast, and who knows? My son might see me blitzed off my face, so I might you know, be drinking that night or something. Um, I mean, the only scene I've seen in theaters was we went, and it was his friend who's got the movie now. I think we may no, we can't, we couldn't remember. We either it's either when we went to see um, uh, the Disaster Artist or we saw the Room, and the Last Jedi was playing in a theater that we had to go past. I had to go to the bathroom. They went in. I went to the bathroom, waited, waited, waited. They didn't come out. Then I went in to go fetch him. There was, I don't know, four people in the theater. It wasn't very much. This was, you know, it hadn't been out for too long. And it was a scene where Ray lifts the boulders and somehow she lifts them uh, with the force, obviously. They're all standing there. And when Finn starts running, they all move out of the way as if now they're weightless. And, of course, then she hugs them and, and the rocks don't go anywhere. I don't think. Maybe they slowly fall to the ground. I don't know. I don't remember. But I was like, that looks so horrible. You know, I don't know if there's any part of the prequels that has worse CGI than that scene. I really don't. Mm, no. Yeah. By the way, Eric said Chipotle is on mute. So it, it's well. Yeah, it, it's like good grief. It's it, yeah. And the prequels have a lot of practical effects that people don't understand. I even posted something in um, yeah, I didn't even know that. on Facebook about it. And it was like, yeah, they blew, they built all kinds of models. And not just for the first one, for all of them. I think it's the second one. It's either this, and I know they had a lot of CGI too, so, so, so get off my back. But I thought it was the second or third one has more uh, medium-sized models than the entire original trilogy. It's just that instead of a lot of it, they used for background plates and then they CGI stuff in between. And a lot of it is they CGI, you know, they scan every angle and side and then they CGI the motion. So a lot of it is where that's how it gets cleaned up. And then a lot of the crowd and, you know, fill in and stuff like that is CGI. But, and I think a lot of the space scenes are, are CGI. But again, I think they built, I know they built mock ups of, um, some of the aspects like what the pilots are in and things like that because uh, uh, ironically the um, I don't remember what kind of fighters they are but the, what's Anakin and, and, and uh, Obi-Wan are in and they have droids you know, you know R2-D2 is hanging out that's actually too small <laughs> and R2 actually dangles <laughs> in, real, yeah. in real, as far as scale but um, it's pretty interesting when you look at some how some of that stuff was made, and they and that was one of the things that Jeff even talked about on last night's show that uh, so many things with the the making of it they kept harping on practical effects, practical effects, and the thing is is and granted you know maybe my memory isn't as good as I want to believe it is, but when those prequels are out, my friends and everybody else thought I was nuts that I didn't like them, and this whole prequel hate I have said this multiple times it took years to start and I'm begin I I still believe Disney was behind it. Because it got George to sell the franchise. Um, but people did not hate the prequels when they came out. I'm sorry. Go back and watch news broadcasts, especially the Phantom Menace. People, about 70% of the people like it. And uh, 7 80%. And people liked them. And they, they all did pretty well. The Phantom Menace made uh, brought in over a billion dollars without adjusting for inflation. 
So, um, you know, don't tell me that, that and that's $1999, 1999 I think it's when that came out. So you adjust it, it's a little bit ahead of some of the newer ones. But it's, you know, it, it's, uh, it, you know, it, I don't know. So I, I might still, I might actually see The Last Jedi. I have no desire to see it. Uh, but it would might be it's a, a nice thing to watch with my son. Now that we down here, we're in the basement where our television is. We don't have any. We don't have any chairs anymore, so we might have to watch it in the smaller TV upstairs, which means no surround sound and all other stuff. So I don't know how we're gonna do it. Um, I know when those guys watch it, they try to keep the audio off, and so maybe I'll do a fan cast, you know, or some kind of I don't know, fan cast, but some kind of, of recording with my son, do a podcast. Uh, Eric dropped off. Let's see if I can get him back on. But, uh, but anyway, any other, I mean, I have some other news I want to get to, uh, any other things about Star Wars or are we done with Star Wars? I'm pretty much done. Uh, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I really didn't hate the prequels. Like in the beginning, yes, I made all the Jar Jar jokes possible and I may or may have not uh, known a guy that probably could have passed off for a skinnier version of Kylo Ren without the mask, by the way. Um, skinnier he's already pretty skinny well this was high school oh, okay so i'm pretty sure they were just even scrawnier anyways um and yeah we probably made a few comics where we killed jar jar off in some really violent and fucked up ways but uh i mean other than that um i really didn't have hate i i remember uh friends um telling, like actually trying to get me interested in it and I would listen to what they had to say. Like they even came up with like their own theories of like how Anakin did bring the balance to the force, so to speak, by first destroying it, which later, you know, his son Luke would end up restoring the balance by destroying the evil, you know, yeah. getting rid of the Empire and everything. So it's like it, it, it kinda of was like a whole work in progress if you look at it from start to finish type of thing. So I was like, you know, it was entertaining. I mean, if you really want to make the uh, prove a point. Just look at, consider this. Even at their worst, with the prequels, right? Even at their worst, people were still going to watch those movies multiple times. Nobody's going to watch any of these movies more than once. Right. Not even the so-called casual fans um, that really, like, I remember casual fans enjoying one, enjoying two, two def- uh, by three. They were still going mm-hmm. with anticipation. These movies... Yeah, tell me somebody who says, "Hey, I want to go watch Star Wars." Right. Yeah. Well, be- and you know, and I like the movie, the originals. Um, you know, I only saw them in theaters once. Uh, now, granted, when I saw, obviously, when I saw Empire, it was on the military base, and usually they only ran for three or four days, and then they were gone. And but when I lived, let's see if we can get Eric back. Eric, can you hear us? Yes, sir. All right. So we're talking about we're we're talking about Star yeah we're talking about Star Wars still, but we're wrapping up. But you know I watch Empire, then I watch the New Hope, uh, you know, or Star Wars, and then even Return of the Jedi when I saw it in '83, I only saw it once. I didn't see it multiple times in theaters. Um, where we watched it multiple times was when it was on television, and sometimes people would record it, and then of course when the uh, VHS tapes came out, when they re-released them before the prequels, uh, they. Were, the the v, the VHS tapes were just the remastered. The sound was clear. The the stuff was cleaned up. But that's before, um, not the the changes Lucas made. And then he just kept picking at that scab, and it's like, cut it out. But um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I've. Ever, I'd have to really think hard about any movie I saw in theaters more than once on its initial run. I mean, Empire is the only Star Wars movie I've seen more than once in theaters. Once in 80 and once uh, again when it came back out in the 90s. Because that was the only one I wanted to see again. By then, that was my favorite. Um, Still my favorite. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I really have to think, you know, if it went to a movie, you know, ironically, The Room I saw on, on uh, DVD first, then saw in theaters. <laughs> so... It's kind of the other way around. 
But uh, even Tron, when I saw Tron in, uh, we lived in Maryland, and uh, my mom took my a friend of mine and myself to the mall, Hagerstown Mall, to see. Because it'd be, I mean, it, I don't know when it played on the military base, and then when I moved to Germany, we got stuff really late. I mean, we, I think Empire, Return of the Jedi came out in 84 over there. And I didn't even bother going to see it, because I knew everybody was going to see it. Back to the Future was, I saw in theaters once. Um, but, but, you know, my... My teenage years when I would be going to a lot of movies was very skewed because I was on a military base for the most part, even early teens. So 79 to uh, 86, I was growing up on a military base somewhere. And so part of that probably plays into that. When a movie's only going to be there three or four days, you probably don't have a chance to see it twice if it's any good. It's good, it's just going to be sold out. Mm-hmm. And now now that's what we're you know we're seeing with a lot of these movies is repeat viewings aren't there. Um, this is why the you know the the last Jedi has a big opening and then just falters because because it sucks. Word word gets out. Two things is people don't want to see it again, right? They go see it in the opening weekend. They're like, I'm not going to go see it again. And then word gets out, and so the next weekend you have this huge fall off of some of the biggest drops in history have now happened with these Star Wars movies. And Solo is probably going to be you know they still don't have a decent trailer for it. I mean they got one, but it's not that great. Deadpool's got trailers. Avengers have three trailers. Yeah, you know, it's just, I think it's going to get just walloped. It's very underwhelming. Yeah. And it's, by the way, speaking of Tron, Brian, you know, I actually still have the Tron novelization from 1982. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, I I mean, I got the novelization of Star Wars. I got the yep. novelization of I saw, Empire, I but I... That was the I never did return uh, Return of the Jedi. I never got the novelization, but I had yep, read. I, I I got into reading the other, well, the Han Solo books and the Calrissian yep, books, the and, books. Yep. and um, uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, and um, and that's about it. And I speaking I, of Alan Dean Foster, did you know that he ghost wrote Star Wars? Yeah, yeah, and it was based on a script. So some of the stuff that that's not in the movie is um, some of those scenes are in the in the novelization, and then what's also in the novelization. This is something that uh, I can't remember if Jeff was talking about it last night or when the, the earlier in the week. Did you guys listen to the show he had the one he did with the yeah. the, the, the artist, yeah, artist was, whose yeah, name like awesome. escapes me? Yeah, Evan, I think was it Evan. Is that his name? Yeah, Ethan. Was very Ethan. Cool. Ethan. Yeah, that was really great. I mean, I apparently caught the last. 30 minutes of it and then I had to it's go to a great bed. listen man and then Check I listened it, it the it's next really day good. oh I listened the whole thing the next day and it was oh, great it was awesome. and uh, I've listened I've watched some of that guy's videos and they're okay but the interaction that he and Jeff had was, was much better but um cool. yeah he did, he did great yeah it was uh, it's yeah. really great but uh I, I I can't remember what was mentioned there I think Jeff said something that in the novel that was there's or he wasn't sure if there was two or three runs, and maybe in the original movie, uh, the, the before Marsha brought it up, and that's why some of the dialogue doesn't quite make sense. And what I can never remember, and I'm not I'm not going to go dig it up in the middle of the show, but um, I thought Biggs got killed. It was he and Wedge and Biggs. Um, they split up, and um, uh, and they think Biggs doesn't make it back. I think that's how it goes. And that's why he says uh, to Wedge, you know, it's almost like Biggs isn't there when Wedge says something like, uh, you know, he said, we're going on full, you know, we're going in this time, we're going in full throttle. Um, and Wedge says, or, you know, look at that speed, or no, Biggs says that. We'll be able to pull out in time. And that's when he says, just be like Beggar's Canyon back home. And, and yep. you know, but they, they went in two runs. Also, he wasn't ready, was blue. Uh, red was the Y wings that got changed, uh, obviously, and before. So I don't know when he, he was ghostwriting that, how early that was. But from what I recall, the movie kind of really starts in chapter five, the novelization. And I'm not. Don't take my words. It's been me. ages since I read it. Yeah. So are you are you head back home? Or are you now home? I'm home right now. Okay. So, Finally, all that Chipotle. Yeah. So, so I'm going to I'm going to be like Obi Wan and I'm going to I, Obi Wan and Luke no and I'm going to dissipate. You're gonna up and disappear like a fart in the wind. Yes, that's a Shawshank. I have my son 
staying outside my car looking for me. <laughs> All right, man. All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys next week. All right. May the force be with you. And also be with and, you. Uh, <laughs> in, All right. And the uh, immortal words, and actually, no, he never said this, but, uh, yeah, live long and prosper. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> we're, we're pretty much done anyway. We're just going to wrap up, so. Yeah. All right, man. See ya. All right. So I just have a couple other news items. Uh, one of them oh, is shoot. Colin Trevorrow is uh, has uh, been tagged by Spielberg, or it's been announced by Spielberg to direct Jurassic World three. Hmm. Wow, that got like zero response. I I haven't seen any of the Jurassic Worlds because I uh, I was like I was. I liked the first one okay, but I didn't need to see a re- yet another reboot. Um, I never saw any of the sequels. Uh, they seem pretty stupid to me. Um, um, apparently, I think with three, there was supposed... It was interesting. Um, I forgot the name of the channel, but apparently I think it's called like Good Bad Films or something like that. I- I'll see if I find a link one day and I'll put it up for everybody to enjoy but apparently they were supposed there was like an original concept for Jurassic Park 3 uh the movie we got in the end was a total disappointment from what they were supposed to do and it was really supposed to be something ima- like crazy um i, I got to show you the video it's it's probably much, much better they explain it than i can yeah well see i thought but, there uh, was a second one already Jurassic World and then cuz Jurassic World know, Fallen uh, Kingdom is set to release in June is, and right. I guess that's not a sequel? Or is that a prequel? What the heck is it? Because this is Jurassic World 3. Well, here's the thing. Jurassic World, right? Uh-huh. Um, the last movie we had was a sequel of sorts to the original. Right. Because they're talking about how they reopened the island. Uh, they're not making the same mistakes of before. Something about Pepsi or Verizon presents. I don't remember too well. I, that I forgot, and actually was a pretty funny moment in the movie. Um, and basically, how even the people that the staff that worked there um, were familiar with the story of the original movie, in you know, the original Jurassic Park. So I, I I wouldn't say it's a. I mean, it's I guess you can call it a reboot of sorts. It's think of it as uh, kind of like what um. Think of kind of like what The Force Awakens did to Star Wars. This movie did to Jurassic Park as a whole, as a franchise. But it didn't... But, like, it really didn't make all the bad moves. Like, it, I think it added a little more depth to it. Um, Chris Pratt was all right. It was pretty good in that movie, so can't knock him for that. At least there was some solid acting on his part. Yeah. Um, and Bryce Dallas Howard is pretty hot in that movie. So that's pretty much... All the positives I could list off the top of my head. Yeah. Well, um, apparently Fallen surprised. Kingdom is the second one. For some reason, I thought they already came out with a sequel. But I guess not. I don't think it has come out. I guess they just announced three already. And um, they said, right. fuck it. Well, Fallen Kingdom comes out June 22nd. So, and that's the second one, apparently. I've just, I'm looking up on IMDb of all the Jurassic Worlds. Uh, there was a, um, apparently a Jurassic World TV really oh it's the drunk review is the TV series Jurassic World was the episode sorry there was a video game uh, and there was Jurassic World Return to Isle Sorna and that was a short so I, I, I like I said I didn't see it but I thought they already had maybe it's the Fallen Kingdom I saw a preview because it looks familiar and I just thought that it had already come out because, you know, I don't really pay that much attention. So, anyway, so Colin Trevorrow, who, um, what did he else did he do? Didn't he get, was he the guy that got removed from Star Wars? Mm, maybe, I don't remember. I'm raising a little fuzzy there. From Episode Nine, Who was supposed to do Episode Nine? Um, God, how many people did, how many men did Kathleen Kennedy, like, kick out? Yeah, see, Star Wars Episode Nine co-writer. Uh, yeah, that's why the name was familiar to me. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. I, I, you know, 
I mean, I don't, you could, if you want to be persnickety, you can count the first one that she had tagged to do Rogue One before Gareth, uh, I'm a big cuck Edwards. Um, and then Gareth, people didn't like his movie. And it's so funny. Listen, there's, there's several videos on YouTube that have bits and pieces of interviews. And he's talking about, it's so nice to have a movie, a Star Wars movie that doesn't have to tee up the next one. And it kind of keeps playing the, the opening crawl to A New Hope, where it says the you know, Rebel Spies is stolen. It's like, and it just gets, the music gets louder. It, you know, it's funny. It cuts back and forth. It's like, um, yeah, you're supposed to have teed up the very first Star Wars movie, you dumb cluck. And, uh, you know, they weren't spies. They didn't, you know, it really, it plays havoc with the continuity and the, the dialogue doesn't make sense anymore. It's really, really stupid, you know. I think Rogue One's a comedy. You know, I, I if you want to see a gritty war movie that's done in semi-modern times, go watch uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, no, of course. That's a war movie. That's what a war movie should feel like. And I don't think even their original... It's supposed to be a heist movie. It's not supposed to be a war movie. Uh, and this whole thing about putting the war back in Star Wars, what the heck was the Battle of Hoth? I mean, that was pretty intense. You know? See, I, the, I, I constantly... I mean, I, I, I know we keep going back to Star Wars, but this whole, like, putting the war back in Star Wars the fuck happened in the prequels yeah that was a lot of that too yeah look, attack of the clones especially the, the, look at the battle on chewie's home planet i mean you talk about an exactly. intense sad battle i mean that's just and return of the jedi i mean people want to talk about this the the cuddly fu- you know these guys were not teddy bears um you know and they're kind of like the cute cuddly panda that t- t- rolls over and then rips your face off <laughs> you know no. If you want to be if you want to be symbolic about it and, and and use more like subtlety, you could even say that the fight between um Obi Wan and Anakin in Part Three is a war, war a, a war as old as time itself. The war between good and evil. Right. What happens when um when a uh, when evil and dark thoughts takes over a uh, kind heart and another one who's trying to fight it to to stop it? it doesn't necessarily have to be a war like in a sense of like large armies fighting each other it could be a war of ideas it could be a war of um good and evil that sort of thing it, it's, it's this nonsense of where they really we live in this era now of people just don't I, I guess they can't really look into things themselves so they have to have somebody else explain it to them like or rather beat it into their heads and if somebody tells you this is what it is we believe it Granted, I can be guilty of that too sometimes, but usually I, after a while, can see through the facade, and people here don't call it out. Like there's this whole all oh, putting the war back in Star Wars nonsense. What the fuck were all the movies about then? Right. Jesus. Right. People risking their life. You have the last second shot to to save. You know, uh, in the original, the first movie. You know, whether you want to call it luck, when you want to skills, you know, awakening of the force, whatever, whatever. Uh, but you had Alderaan completely blown up. Now, what we didn't have was like we got in The Force Awakens where people looked up and they saw this beam coming. Well, in the original, it went a lot faster. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the whole thing is, is, is just is just funny. And there was a – someone posted in – speaking of Star Wars, someone posted in the, in the chat in the fan page. Um, this guy's gone back and done a – I think I talked about it earlier – it's a great it's a great it basically went back and it's like oh you know they're, they're, i can't wait to see more about that and um you know they can see the red beam they're sitting on they're at maz Kanata's place and they see the red beam go by and the destroys are they all the other planets so all that all that has to be in the same solar system and apparently physics doesn't work there because they're all too close to one another um the sun isn't going to provide that much light uh you know and plus all the other light, worlds were dark so it's pretty stupid but um Anyway, in other news, so are we done with Star Wars? Yeah, I got, yes, I got yes, like yes, one or two yes. more items, and we'll wrap up and get out of here. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, in other news, and, and I was actually hoping that we'd get to this before Eric was gone, but uh, hey, do you do you want to go to Walmart to get your health care? Does that really uh, sit well with you? Wait, Walmart to get what? Your health care. My health care? Yeah. 
All right, elaborate. So Walmart is um, seeking an acquisition of Humana, the insurance company. Interesting. So uh, Humana has a $37 billion market cap, which might sound really great, except when you look at Walmart, it's $264 billion. So uh, and this is out of the Wall Street Journal. I actually saw this on LinkedIn uh, today and had to find out some of the details. It's actually uh, from yesterday. Uh, Walmart Corporation is in preliminary talks uh, to buy insurer Humana Incorporated, according to people familiar with the matter. A deal that would make a market dramatic shift for the retail behemoth and the largest in a recent flurry of big deals in healthcare services. So I guess this is why they had to close all those stores. It isn't clear what terms the company may be discussing, and there's no guarantee they will strike a deal. If they do, the deal would be big. Humana currently has a market value of $37 billion. Uh, it also would be Walmart's largest deal by far, eclipsing its 1999 acquisition of the UK's Asada Group PLC for $10.8 billion. Walmart, which is in addition to which, in addition to becoming the world's biggest retailer, is also a major drug store operator, has a market value of $260 billion. So uh, there we go. You know, Disney. So have, we have the uh, the Disney of the um, department store, I guess, is what you could call a Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Um, now Humana's not, uh, they're not, a they're not a, well, they're a decent player, I guess. CVS is $185 billion and they, they apparently, uh, are buying or have bought, yeah, they're, they've bought Aetna or going to buy Aetna. Apparently that was announced last December. United yeah. Health is 201 billion. Cigna. Now, how does this work? Well, maybe it's a merger. Uh, Cigna is twenty-four billion, and the hundred million, hundred billion for Express Scripts. Walgreens Boots, one hundred and twenty-four billion, and Anthem ninety billion. That just gives you the the uh, mark, the more or less rounded up market cap of the other competitors. I'm not going to read. It's a relatively long article, although unlike some of the ones that Ethan was reading, this one is well um, written, and it's actually easy for me to read when I actually read the words that are there. But uh, now apparently Walmart was. In today's trading was up 1.3 uh 1.37%, but yesterday it lost a dollar after the announcement. So there you go. Walmart may or may not be buying Humana, and uh I don't know what all that means. I know we someone like Kroger and other places you've got uh pharmacies, and I mean I know the Myers got pharmacies and stuff like that, but it'd be interesting. So I thought I would, you know, something that's kind of odd in the world that's not necessarily entertainment, but I found it, you know, relatively uh, enjoyable and relevant given the, what Disney's doing as well. well I mean, the, the parallels are there. If anything, um, this is one of those things I would say it's, it will be interesting to see what happens, but we should be very cautious of, what's, of what this could implicate further down the line. Um, I mean, with healthcare as it is already in this country and uh, the less said about a certain act that still exists, the better. And believe me, I don't like it any more than anybody else does. Um, I don't know, man. It, it seems like one of those things that I think it's more of a wait-and-see approach, and let's see what happens with it, because I don't think we've ever really had anything like this before. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know. And uh, it'll be interesting to see and interesting to watch. Yeah. But that is the uh, last item I've got on the list, uh, other than the BBC of the week. All right. Um, I guess I'll close out with uh, one thing that I wanted to just throw oh, yeah. out there. Uh, so for anybody who's interested, I did watch Ready Player One yesterday morning. Um, I believe, to, I think, I don't know if the movie came out last week or if it was supposed to come out this week and I saw an early release. I don't know. I, I really wasn't paying too much attention, but um, what did I think? Well, I probably missed like the first five, ten minutes. I did get there a little bit late. Um, it was more on the whim type of thing with my brother. I mean, it's nowhere a trash film, but it becomes an unintentional comedy pretty quickly towards the middle, and I would say towards the end. There's a whole um, big business thing behind it, and uh, let's create our own resist, uh, and, and we have our resistance and we're playing this video game because it has real, real world consequences. And, uh, all I can say is nostalgia, um, LARPing, the 
VR chat, if, if yeah. and a cameo or two by Overwatch characters. Um, does it have any positives? There's messages. I'm pretty sure if you actually really think about what the movie's trying to get at, you could see the messages. You could understand what they're probably getting at. But it's really easy to lose yourself in this movie. And I don't mean that in a good way. I mean, like, it's really easy to lose track of what's going on. At times, it feels like two different movies. Um, one being the action that's going on in that virtual world, the video game world, and then what's going on in real life. And you start to notice how one, like, they goes from back and forth at one point, and it kind of disconnects you. Kind of like, you know, you're focusing on two things at the same time. Uh, you're not really paying much. You're not really putting much focus into one. You get distracted really easy. Um, I really am trying my best not to spoil anything, but without actually giving you more details, that's pretty much about it. Um, is it a watch movie? If you want, go ahead. I mean, there was a pretty good fight sequence between. If anybody's interested, uh, Mecha Godzilla, a uh, Gundam and the Iron Giant. I'll leave that to your imagination. But other than that, um, I guess a decent popcorn flick and unintentional comedy. I do not know why people would be using VR gloves and the Oculus Rift and suits out on the streets in the year 2045, I think it is in, in the book. Out on the streets, by the way. Not, not like in, I mean, yes, they're using it in, in their homes and everything. But when you start seeing the and throughout the movie like soccer moms and little girls playing this thing, you're in your mind like, wait a second, are, are they for real? Like this is this is coming out now, and this isn't even a thing now. I don't know. I I just don't see it happening in that timeline. But I could be wrong. No, no. But that's all I have to say about Ready Player One. Um, not the worst thing in the world, but not hot shit either. So that's my final verdict. All righty. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Didn't read the book. I, I should have probably read the book a couple of years ago. Uh, I had people that knew me well tell me, you need to read this book, but I didn't because I'm lazy. I mean, All right. pop culture reference after pop culture reference. After a while, you're like, you know, we, we, we everything nowadays is like a pop culture reference. That's probably the problem, a big problem with entertainment. It, it doesn't, nothing is really creating. It, it's, you know what it is? It's, we're following the trends. We're not setting any. That's what it is. Right. So I would throw that out there with this movie. It really is more of a trend follower than a trend setter. Yeah, well, there's that. And, uh, Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, you, you don't really want to be the, the setter, not the follower. But, hey. Exactly. That happens. All right. Well, the BBC of the week is the lovely and gracious Helen Flanagan. Helen Flanagan is a model slash actress, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, I had it somewhere. What did I do with it? I got distracted trying to make a transparent piece. But she is a 5'3". She's from Bury, Una, uh, UK. She was, um, she's was. she been on Coronation Street and Coronation Street Omnibus. Uh, I find it hard. I, I look at her and I, it's really hard for me to believe she's only 5'3". Uh, the important things is she wears a size four. She start according to bodymeasurements.org, 34, 25, 36. She will wear is a 32 E bra size and she's, yeah, cup is E double D, 5253, 123 pounds. So there you go. Congratulations, Helen Flanagan. We've now gone back to a blonde. I've, we've got all kinds of people coming up. I know, I think Noah, we're going to do, um, Naomi Campbell one of these weeks. So that has been it. So if that is it, let's close out and uh, for the dog start barking at my daughter coming in. So this has been episode 34 of the FanCast. I have been your host, Brian Greenleaf and the Lifting Nerd. And LP, close us out. Uh, LARPing in 2018. It's, it's a thing, apparently. It's a thing, and cue the music. <laughs>